Today, I just bought my most terminally ill fan his replacement heart. Oh my god. Is that Mr. Beast? This kid looks sick as heck, dude. Bruh. Do you want a heart to save your life? Or do you want a Mr. Beast rap Tesla? I would literally kill myself for a Tesla. Good boy. Now, you have to search these hundred coolers filled with human hearts to find the Tesla key. Man, I wish I was terminally ill. Your boy be driving a Ford Explorer. Bruh. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if this guy should be doing this. He looks really sick, Jimmy. Man, I'm looking to play some Among Us with my boys. Nope. All right, dying guy. You got about 20 more seconds to find the key. Oh, what seems to be going on in here? Oh my god, it's Mr. Beast! Oh, I've been a fan since 1 million subs. Oh, man, this is awesome. Always great to hear. Here's $5,000, and we just planted 2,000 trees outside of Liberty, Missouri, in your name. Thanks for being a fan. Bye-bye. Oh. Oh. Uh, I got it. I got the Tesla key. <laughs> Congrats on your new car! Now, unfortunately, you won't be able to get a new heart, and you're still on track to die in about two weeks. <sighs> but don't worry! We will be planting 2,000 trees outside of Liberty, Missouri in your name. Also, we will be planting 1,000 trees for every million views this video gets. So please share, like, and comment, and rewatch this so we can keep this brave man's legacy alive. Well... I have a, a donor coming out of state to bring me a new heart in a few days, so I think I should recover okay. Bruh. Today, I just bought this entire hospital. Courage starts with a risk. Alright, now when you're a kid in school, there was nothing better than going on a field trip. And out of all the field trips that I had as a kid, our local bowling alley was probably my favorite. Now, why was it my favorite? Because it was totally uneducational, that's why. This ain't the art museum for Christ's sake, this is a dirty ass bowling alley. You're gonna eat nachos, and then you're gonna bowl a sorry ass 29 in 10 frames. You're not gonna learn anything. Now, when we would do field trips at my school, we would be put into groups, and then parents would volunteer to chaperone our little asses. And my group consisted of me, this kid Brandon, his dad as the chaperone, and this other kid, Eric. Now, nobody was a big fan of Eric. For one, Eric was a dirty little bastard. He was the kid that'd be picking his nose in class, or he'd be digging in his ass crack at recess. You know, that type of kid. And for two, he was always putting shit in his mouth, because, you know, he's a dirty little bastard. Hey, you guys, look, I found this used Band-Aid on the ground. Oh, God, Eric, don't do it. Oh, sick. God damn it, Eric. You're gonna get bacterial meningitis or some shit. What the hell's the matter with you? So needless to say, taking Eric to a dirty-ass bowling alley probably wasn't the best idea. But off we go into Brandon's dad's car. And I have to say, Brandon's dad was not the best chaperone. We're in the back seat with no seatbelts on and shit. His dad's telling us stories about shit that you probably shouldn't be telling a bunch of nine-year-olds. Yeah, last time I was at this bowling alley, I got my second DUI and I went to jail for six months. Of course, I had a hooker in my car at the time, so that sure as hell didn't help. So we pull up to this bowling Bowling alley that smack dab in the hook. So there we are, a bunch of chill on the sidewalk and shit. Hey, do you guys have any bird months? Of course, I had a hooker in my car at the time, so that sure as hell didn't help. So we pull up to this bowling alley that smack dab in the hood. There's like crackheads on the sidewalk and shit. Hey, do you guys have any bourbon or barbiturates? Nope, just these small children. You want one of them? Haha, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Seriously, don't tell your teacher I said that. So there we are, a bunch of children at a dirty ass bowling alley. There's nothing but a bunch of old fat dudes there smoking cigarettes. Uh, is this really a good place for a field trip? <laughs> probably not, but your parents signed the permission slip, didn't they? Meanwhile, Eric's over there smelling his bowling shoes. 
Oh, these things smell like fucking Cheetos. Oh, and they taste like them too. Now, I don't know if you've ever went bowling with a bunch of nine-year-olds before, but it's absolute chaos to say the least. You got kids hurling 14-pound bowling balls at the floor and shit. Oh uh, yeah, can the little asshole on lane six stop hucking bowling balls like it's a fucking shot put? You gotta break the goddamn bowling alley. What the hell's the matter with you? We're putting fake names into the computer and shit. Whose turn is it? Ah, uh, well, let's take a look here. It looks like it's, uh, Hugh Janus. Hugh Janus? Is there a Hugh Janus here? Uh, yeah, lane six, can you stop shouting about your giant asshole, please? You're freaking out the whole goddamn bowling alley. What the hell's the matter with you? So after a couple of hours of haphazard bowling and ingesting secondhand smoke, it was time to leave. The only problem was, nobody knows where the hell Eric is. Uh, where's little Eric at? Who? Eric, the other kid in your group? Oh, how the hell should I know? Because you're responsible for him. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, that's right. Shit. Well, I guess I dropped the ball there. Are you drinking a beer right now? Well, yeah, I'm at a bowling alley. What am I supposed to do? Hey, that's probably when he went missing was when I was getting this beer at the bar. So now my teacher's freaking out. She's running all over the place looking for Eric's dumbass. Hey, crackheads, you didn't steal one of my kids, did you? Yeah, I'll take another beer over here. Oh, yeah, um, you didn't have to see a kid named Hugh Janus around here, did you? So after 20 minutes of scouring the bowling alley, we finally find Eric in the game room. And being the dirty little bastard that he is, he's got something in his mouth. What is it that's in his mouth? Well, I'll tell you. A bunch of fucking quarters. Ah, oh, sick, he had a bunch of quarters in his mouth. He's like a shitty piggy bank. The look on my teacher's face, she didn't even know what the hell to say. Eric, what the fuck? I was washing them with my mouth so I could make them shiny and clean. Eric, you're gonna get bacterial meningitis or some shit. All right, that's enough bowling for one day. Everybody, get out. And that was the end of our field trip. So maybe I was wrong about the bowling alley. Maybe it was more educational than I thought. After all, I learned a lot that day. Things like DUIs and hookers are bad for you. And that bowling shoe can taste like Cheetos. And I learned a great way to make my loose change shiny and clean. Hey kid, you got any spare change I can have? Ah, oh, sick, what the fuck? Bruce do duck. All right, now when I was a kid, there was nothing like a good old fashioned school fundraiser. I don't know if things have changed these days, but back in my day, they would just herd all of us kids into the auditorium and we'd be sitting there totally clueless. What the hell's going on? Is it the Russians? Are the Russians attacking? All right, class, today we're gonna have a guest speaker here to talk to you about a school fundraiser. Now these guest speakers had one goal in mind, and that was to get all of us kids as hyped as possible so we'd go out and sell as much shit as possible. And for the most part, it'd work. There'd be this dude up there with a boom box, all amped up like he just did a couple of a ripper magoos in the bathroom. You guys ready to sell some candy bars? Yeah! Y'all ready to get exploited for some cash? Hell yeah! And of course, a school fundraiser is nothing without all the shitty prizes that you could win. The more candy bars you sell, the more bullshit that you receive. That's right, if you sell over 700 candy bars, you'll win this sweet, sweet Tony Danza slap bracelet. Oh yeah, I don't know who the fuck Tony Danza is, but I gotta have that slap bracelet. And then there'd always be like the most ridiculous grand prize for whoever sold the most candy bars. And for whoever sells the most candy bars, they will get the super duper grand prize, the state of New Mexico. <laughs> so we get out of school for the day, and we're all amped up with our little stupid suitcases filled with candy bars. Nobody's gonna outsell me. That state of New Mexico is as good as mine. You get home and you immediately corner your parents. Hey, Dad, how about you go ahead and buy yourself some of these here candy bars? Uh, how about you go ahead and go fuck yourself instead? How about that? You need to get your ass out there and go door to door and put your life on the line like all the other kids. So me and my dumbass friends venture out into our neighborhood try to sell as many candy bars as possible. The only problem was that these candy bars were generic as hell. I mean, it just said candy bar in the wrapper and shit. They're super bland. They taste like a goddamn alarm clock. Who the hell's gonna buy these things? Hey, you wanna buy some candy bars for our school fundraiser? Uh, kid, I've eaten assholes that taste better than those goddamn candy bars. No thanks. <laughs> Candy bars for sale, would you like to buy one? Hey honey, you wanna buy some bullshit from these dirty little kids? Uh, no. Nope, not interested. <laughs> Hello sir, would you like to buy a candy bar for a good cause? I got the type 2 diabetes, you little shit. You trying to kill me? You can shove those candy bars up your little third grade asses. All right, so clearly this was gonna be a lot harder than we initially thought. So what do we decide to do? Well, we decide to start lying to people. You know, try to guilt them into buying these goddamn candy bars. Hi, my dog has rickets and we're selling candy bars to help raise money for him. Oh my God, your dog has rickets? How awful. Honey, go get your checkbook. This dirty little boy's dog has rickets. And being the dumbass little kids that we were, we'd go to every house on the block. We didn't care who it was. Uh, I think we should skip this house. It says no soliciting right there. Oh no, they're talking about hookers. My stepdad says that's what soliciting means. 
Hey, assholes! The sign says no solicitors! Is he calling us hookers? Hey, you dirty old man, I'm not a hooker! I'm trying to raise money for the penguins in Puerto Rico! The penguins in Puerto Rico? Oh, well, hell, you should have said that to begin with! Let me find my checkbook! Hell, we'd be so desperate to make a sale, we'd even go to the creepy old guy's house on the end of the block! Uh, yeah, I don't know about this. My dad said this guy's not allowed to go within 300 yards of a Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, to hell with that! I need to get that Tony Danza slap bracelet! Yeah, what do you kids want? Hi, I'm raising money for my stepdad's hysterectomy. Can you buy a candy bar? I'll buy whatever you want me to if you come inside and play hide the banana. Yeah, uh, no thank you. I'm not solicitating right now. You guys want to come inside and eat hot pockets and watch me clip my toenails? Uh, all right, let's get the fuck out of here. Hey, where are you guys going? You guys should come in my backyard and see if you can fit in this hole that I just dug. So after a few weeks uh, selling these crappy candy bars, we finally get our shitty prizes that we worked so hard for. Wow, that was totally not worth it. Yeah, and I still don't know who the fuck Tony Danza is. But the worst part of it all had to be that the kid that sold the most candy bars in my class didn't do a goddamn thing. He didn't scour his neighborhood and dodge pedophiles left and right. No, he just had his parents take his candy bars to their work and they sold them all for him. So we busted our ass for these stupid Tony Danza slap bracelets and this asshole wins the state of New Mexico. God damn it. Alright, now I think it's safe to say that when you're a kid, there were certain houses in your neighborhood that you would tend to stay away from. I mean, everybody knew where the neighborhood pervert was on the block, after all. Hey, you guys wanna come inside my house so I can take pictures of your feet? But for me, personally, I was always more worried about the old lady that lived across the street from me. Because this old lady was mean as hell, and she was notorious for yelling at anybody that walked past her house. Get off my property, you little piss bag! Um, I'm on the sidewalk, what the hell do you want me to do, walk in the middle of the street? Ah! Ah! Hell, even if you were in your own front yard, minding your own business, doing kid shit, she would sit on her front porch and stare at you and make you uncomfortable as hell. La di da da, I'm doing kid shit. Well, what the? Uh, ma'am, can I help you? Uh, hello? This is really uncomfortable. Goodbye. Um, there's some old lady staring at me like she's the fucking Blair Witch. Can I just play inside? Listen, I don't care if it's John Wayne Gacy out there staring at you. You get your ass out there and you play outside. And if that wasn't bad enough, she had this big-ass cat that would stare at us as well. And when I say this cat was big, I mean this thing was like the size of a goddamn third grader. I could eat a baby if I want, I don't give a damn. It was an outdoors cat. It would just roam around the neighborhood, catch people off guard when they're walking down the street. Oh, what the hell is that, a Kodiak brown bear? Kids, run for your lives. There's a fucking Kodiak brown bear roaming the streets. So naturally, this mean old lady and her fat ass cat gained quite the reputation amongst us kids. We'd be making up urban legends. Alright, so I was at this bar not too long ago, and I had to take a piss. So I saunter off to the men's room, and at this particular bar, the bathroom's made up of one stall and two urinals. Now it's worth noting that these two urinals, well they're about eh, four centimeters apart. Needless to say, you gotta get a little comfortable with whoever you're pissing next to. You're so close to the other guy that uh, you kinda just wanna be like, you know what, fuck it, you wanna share a urinal? Let's share a urinal, we might as well. So I walk in, and of course there's already somebody at the urinal, and of course there's already somebody duking it up in the stall. Alright, whatever, fuck it. Time to get cozy and be pee pails with whoever this strange man is over here. So I squeeze in next to this guy, and he's all pissed off and does this little sigh, like, come on dude, can't you go piss in the sink or something? Like, listen buddy, I don't like this any more than you do, alright? Our shoulders are rubbing against each other and shit. Let's just tough it out, we don't gotta make out after this or anything. So there we are, dicks in hand, and it was right about this time that I realized that this guy, he's not even pissing. I'm not saying that I was oogling this guy's wiener, but there was definitely no tinkle sounds coming from the tinkling area. And I kind of like glance over at this dude's face and kind of give him the nod like, hey, what's up, buddy? And he's got this paranoid look on his face, a face that I've never seen on a human being's head before. Looks like he just swallowed a bunch of pennies or something like that. Now it's worth noting that I don't have a shy bladder. At least not when I'm halfway drunk, which is what I was. When I'm halfway drunk, I can piss in public, I can piss in front of my grandparents, in front of a school field trip, you name it, I can piss it. I can piss standing on this dude's shoulders if I wanted to. But as soon as I notice that this guy's not peeing, my brain kicks in and is like, hey, you know what would be weird? If you couldn't piss either, and you guys just stood there with your dicks out. And as soon as I thought it, well, it sure the fuck happened. I'm pushing, God damn it, am I pushing. My eyes are bulging out of my head, my face is turning all red and shit. Nothing's coming out, though. A fucking puff of dust hits the back of the urinal. 
Now we're just two grown men holding our dicks. Yeah, I'm here at the great pissing stalemate of 2016, where two grown men, dick in hand, can't piss in front of each other. That sounds awful, Tom. Is there any end in sight? No way, Bill. Both are completely insecure, and neither one of them want to be the weirdo that just hovered their dick in front of a urinal for three minutes for no goddamn reason. I'm standing there thinking, like, God, if my dad could see me now. You know what? Fuck this. I'm gonna stand here until I explode. I don't give a shit. I'm standing in my ground. I'm not peeing. You're not peeing. What the hell are we doing here holding our ding-dongs for? What are we, practicing? Like 30 seconds go by and we're both standing here pretending like this isn't the most awkward moment of our lives. It's a very tense moment. Like Clarice talking to Hannibal Lecter. Tense. Hello, Clarice. Dr. Lecter, it's Jody Foster. Quid pro quo, Clarice. Quid pro quo. Jody Foster. Look how handsome I am. Some guy walks in the middle of all this shit, sees what's going on, is like, nope, I want nothing to do with this weirdness. I'll go piss in the street. The dude pooping in the stalls, wondering what the hell's going on out there. Uh, are you guys still in here? Finally, after what seems like a goddamn eternity, my uh, piss partner sees an opening. He finally gets the courage to piss. I don't know what's going on, Eye of the Tiger. This is it, the big moment. He finally lets loose for a whole half a goddamn second. He pissed just enough to fill up a thimble. And then he zips up and runs out of there like the building's on fire. Holy shit, I won. I did it. I, I won pissing stale my 2016. I was so relieved. I swear to God, I could have just dropped my pants around my ankles and pissed like the weird kid did in first grade. All bare-assed and all. The pooping dude's clapping for me. I left that bathroom feeling relieved, hoping somebody was going to give me like a sash or something. Pissing champion 2016. But no, there's no confetti, no celebratory applause. But I did get to uh, avoid eye contact with that other guy the entire rest of the night. So that was rewarding. I kind of felt bad for him. I was thinking about going no celebratory buying him a beer. Just be like, look, dude, sorry, uh, sorry it got all emotional in there. I'd shake your hand, but uh, your dick was in it, so here's a Michelob Ultra. BruceDude.com Jody Foster. It's my Jody Foster impression. I don't have a good I feel like my Hannibal Lecter impression sucks, Dick, but my Jody Foster impression, that shit is perfect. Dr. Lecter, it's Jody Foster. It's pretty similar to Ruff McGruff. Jody Foster and Ruff McGruff, they're the same person to me. Ruff McGruff, Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> Jody Foster, take a bite out of crime. <laughs>